last year someone gave me a book on Shackleton's expedition to the Antarctic. And what I found most amazing was the sense of discipline. Several times during the expedition everything really looked hopeless, but they pulled through, largely because one or two people decided to do what they'd always been told to do. Whatever their training had been, they just put it into practice. Everyone else was giving up. But because a few people were hanging in there, maintained that sense of discipline no matter what happened, they were able to come through. Their conviction that even though things looked hopeless, well, the only choice you have is just to hang in there. If things do turn out to be really bad, well, at least you've given your best. It's an important lesson, one that really applies to the meditation. And it applies to how we apply meditation in our daily lives. And this is the discipline that we're learning. And we don't use it just when it's easy to sit here with our eyes closed and there's nothing disturbing us. The lessons and skills that we need when things really get tough. things look hopeless. I've talked to several people talking about the uncertainties of life right now. What's going to happen and the kind of fallout that we all expect is going to happen. Well, it's not like life was certain before and all of a sudden has become uncertain. It's just we're more aware of the uncertainty. And so you have to ask yourself, okay, what kind of life do you want to live in the midst of this uncertainty? And the best answer is, well, stick with the best disciplines you know. Because remember, life isn't the most important thing there is. It's the state of your mind that's the most important thing. If you can maintain that, in spite of the uncertainties, in spite of the ups and downs and all the crazy decisions that get made out there, then you've done your best. You've done what you can as a human being. And that's important. If you give up without doing your best, again, then there's something that's, there's always going to be a strong sense of lack, something that you could have done but you didn't do, or a strong sense of regret. So it's important that we have a sense of discipline in our meditation. We come up here every evening at the same time, whether we feel like it or not. This is just what we do. This is what has to be done. Because there will come times when, okay, you just do what has to be done. No matter how hopeless it looks, it's going to be a lot worse than just not feeling like meditating. But what we have to hold on to at that point, aside from the skills you've picked up here. So when the meditation goes well, you meditate. When it goes poorly, you want to meditate. And then try to look at it as a learning experience. Each time you meditate, you're working on a skill. And sometimes the skill is how to maintain a good state of mind. Once things get balanced, once things begin to sort of get into the groove, how do you maintain it? How do you not give in to boredom, a sort of antsy desire to get something else in there? Just maintain a good state of mind. That's one skill. Another skill is when things aren't going well at all. Can you still hang in there? Try one thing after another to see what might work. And when you find something that works just a little bit, okay, hold on to that for a while. Because maybe that little bit is just the, the seed of what you need for a good state of mind to grow. And yes, there are good and bad states of mind. Some people say, well, you shouldn't be judgmental. There's always everything should be viewed with equanimity. You know, we're working on a skill. I mean, this is a kind of a dualistic path. We have to be clear about that fact. Some ways of meditation are more skillful than others. Some states of mind have more potential than others. We should try our best to develop those states of mind if they haven't appeared yet and maintain them when they have, because they're very worthwhile. They have lots of uses. You have to take a pragmatic approach to the meditation. It's not just to sit here and bliss out on certain experiences and then tell ourselves, okay, well, I'm not attached to that experience. That brings up a lot of denial in the mind. 
There's nothing wrong with getting attached to good states, as long as you can be mature in your attachment. In other words, realize you won't be able to get them every time, but as you work at it, stick with it, okay, it'll become more and more your normal state of mind. And then once you've attained that, okay, what uses are there for that state? When the mind settles down, okay, it's a good basis for discernment to arise. What kind of discernment can you develop from that particular level of concentration? How can you use a sense of well-being that comes from that concentration and learn to pry yourself away from other attachments? In other words, you learn how to do it, how to maintain it, and then how to put it to use. And with things that aren't going well, okay, take that as a learning experience too. Try to figure out what's gone wrong. I had a friend one time who was studying pottery in Japan and with one of those living national masters they have over there. And she was getting discouraged. Her pots sometimes would come out well and sometimes it wouldn't come out well. Whereas his just came out well every day, every day, every day, until one day she came in and discovered that one of his batches had come out poorly. But instead of getting depressed and upset about it, he was sitting there in the kiln trying to figure out what went wrong. Was it the clay? Was it the glaze? Was it the placement? Was it the fire? And that's why he was a living national treasure. In other words, he didn't allow the, the failure to set him back. Took it as a learning experience. Okay? There was something even, even a living national treasure didn't know yet. He was always willing to learn. So as you sit down and meditate, keep reminding yourself, okay, here's an opportunity to learn. If things go well, you learn how things go well. If things don't go well, will you learn from things not going well? And try to figure out what's the best you can do in a particular circumstance. Because sometimes things are just not going to fall together for, all, for the time you're meditating. Okay, try to make the best of what you've got. This is where you develop your ingenuity as a meditator. We all want things to go smoothly and quickly and easily, but you don't really learn much that way. The learning comes from the time when things are difficult, but you don't give in. So it's important we have this sense of discipline in our meditation, that we're not just here for the, for the nice states that we can get. We're here for the good and the bad, to learn from both the good and the bad. So that when things really get bad, okay, we've been there before. We know what it's like. We're up for whatever comes. I had a friend who went through military training one time, and he was telling me about how they would go for a long-distance run. And they'd be told, okay, you're going to be running for X number of miles, and then you get to rest. And then as they got to the point where they thought they were going to rest, they said, oops, we're going to, we're going to run for another mile. And at first it sounded to me it was awfully sadistic. But as he said, hey, when you're out in the battlefield, you don't know how long you're going to have to run. Or you think you can rest, nope, something comes up, and you have to be up for whatever comes. And that's a quality that you want to develop as a meditator. You're up for whatever's there. Whatever's called for, okay, you do your best. And you don't worry about your self-image, and you don't worry about all that other stuff that you tend to clutter up your mind with. Just, okay, what needs to be done right now? Okay, do I have the resources? Can I find them someplace? Okay, let's do it. When you have that attitude towards your meditation, you can find it, it can take you places you wouldn't expect that you could go. And you realize that, yes, there is something more important than comfort, or something, as the Buddha taught ultimately, even something even more important than life itself. Okay, it's this state of mind that you're constantly getting ready. To the point where it finally hits someplace where you don't have to get it ready anymore. It's there.
from the Tilden point, this quality of discipline is very important. And what does it come down to? One, on the one hand, it's conviction that, yes, okay, this is a good training. And two, persistence, just keeping at it. Those are the first two qualities that the Buddha called strengths. Give strength to the mind, give energy to the mind. So the mind doesn't just sort of give up when things get tough. Or when things get uncertain or things look hopeless. There's that great passage in the canon where the Buddha's talking to King, king Bembisar and he says, What have you been doing today, King? And the king says, Well, the typical things that a person obsessed with power would do. I've always liked that passage. You don't find that many world leaders who are that frank. How many kings or presidents or whatever today would say, Okay, I've just been spending my day doing the sort of things that people obsessed with power tend to do. But the Buddha went on. He said, Suppose someone came from the east and said there was this huge mountain coming in from the east, crushing all life in its path. Reflecting on the fact that human life is hard to come by, what would you do? And suppose there's another person who said, coming from the west, there's a huge mountain coming in from the west, crushing all life in its path. Another person from the south, another person from the north. In other words, four mountains coming in on you. Reflecting on how valuable and how precious human life is and how hard it is to come by, what would you do? And the king said, what else could I do but just to calm my mind and just keep on doing good? And the Buddha said, okay, death is coming in, crushing all living beings in its path. What are you going to do? Well, the answer is obvious. And so when uncertainty looms in our lives and all around the planet, what do you do? Okay, you just do whatever is good. Maintain the precepts, practice your meditation. Get your mind in as good a shape as possible. And whatever energy you have beyond that, okay, apply that to the situation around you. But this is your first priority. Even though other things are uncertain, the, the certainty of the Dharma is not made uncertain by the uncertainty of life or the uncertainty of social stability or whatever. It's something that's always true, no matter what. Something that always gives benefits to the mind, no matter what. So we should have the sort of discipline that can stick to the Dharma, no matter what. And that way we'll reap the best things that life has to offer us, right here in the practice.